So now we're gonna talk about what I call auxiliary mics or augmenting mics. These are microphones that go on the additional pieces of the kit that are not considered as primary as the snare and kick. Every drum is important, but most of these drums are gonna have a really good image represented in our overheads. That said, sometimes we wanna reinforce things, get a little bit more power, a little bit more punch, even in something like a cymbal or a hi-hat. So I'm gonna show you a hi-hat capture and a floor tom capture. This is gonna go over some pretty basic principles that pretty easily apply. So with the hi-hat, what we have is a cymbal, and all cymbals fundamentally work in a similar way. We have the bell. The bell is the ringiest part, and it is also the generation of second harmonic tones, primarily. So the bell has a more melodic sound. It's the one where you hear it and it goes, bing! The rim, this is where the actual tone comes from. All the sound comes off of the rim vibrating like this. If you've ever watched a cymbal move in slow motion, it looks kind of cool. It kind of looks like it's doing this, up and down. All of those vibrations are coming off of the rim. So that's where the odd harmonics and even harmonics are gonna come from. I tend to prefer to mic the rims on hats in particular. Now for rides, I might go for something more like the bell because we play and hear more of the bell. We're used to hearing that sound, but again, we have that choice. And we have a lot of different ways we can do it. We can either go straight on against the rim and we're gonna get a very brassy, edgy sound. We can go on above the rim, we're gonna get a little bit more of a sweeter sound because we're gonna pick up more of the second harmonics, or we could have something that's in between and as you can see here I have it slightly angled so it's mostly above but it's angled down a little bit and it sounds like this pretty cool now one thing I will say and I don't mean to make this sound like a cop-out but if we're setting up our drums and the drummer is ready to go and we don't get this stuff perfect, these augmenting drums, that's okay. What's more important is that we get the musicians doing what they need to do in an expedited manner. This is gonna work. I don't need to go over trying different vertical axes for some different horizontal axes. That's not where I should be spending my energy. Really, it should be the overheads kick and snare. So with the floor tom, we can almost think of this as like, basically a snare drum in a lot of ways. We're going to get the same sort of thing going on where if we have it aimed directly down, we're going to get an attackier sound. If we have it more at the rim, we're going to get a little bit more of the high end, a little bit less of the lows. We'll find with floor toms in particular, really any tom, there's enough low end going there where we really don't wanna to be too much into the center. It's just gonna become overwhelming and sound really muddy. I find that pretty close to the rim, just about where we've got it right now is going to be what's best. No lack of low end, right? Now that said, let's say that we do have a tighter tom, or let's say that we have something that's tuned a lot higher. So that's a much punchier sound that doesn't ring as long, something like that. We can take something like a kick drum mic, like, like a D112, Beta 52, or whatever it might be, and also mic the bottom ends. There's no rule against that. And it can actually produce a really, really cool sound. It's going to reinforce the low end. We're not gonna have enough space where we're really going to be getting the full resonance in there. But it definitely can add some boom to a tom if you're not getting enough of a deep tone from just the top alone. That said, do we need a thousand mics on this kit? Probably not. So unless the record is really driven by the floor tom sound, which sometimes they are, we don't really need to have that much reinforcement in general. The same thing applies to the rack tom. Usually we want it to be somewhere, maybe just inside the rim, aimed 45 degrees or, or tighter to the actual skin. And then when we're hitting it, we're gonna get that sound. We can make little adjustments, but ultimately if it's not perfectly spot on, this is one of those things where we can cheat it a little bit and in the mix fix things up. <laughs> Don't tell anyone I said that, except for everyone who's watching this.